There have been times in my life that I wrote about in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, where the Lord just completely opened my eyes to see something in the Bible that had never been seen before. It was designed to be revealed in the last days from the scriptures, proven by scripture. And I wrote everything down in that book. Um, but the Lord has just done something that I am astounded by. And it had to do with when I was talking about the first thing I was mentioning, I was talking about the Toleat Shani, the insect that creates the scarlet crimson color for all of the things in the Holy Temple according to what Moses was shown. In my other video, I talked about the lady in Israel that is trying to manufacture this Toleat Shani scarlet color or crimson as it's known for the third temple and then the next video I did I was talking about this Stradivari forest and if you remember I talked about how John Good of DW Drums went to the forest of the uh, Italian Alps where Stradivari got the wood, the special wood for building the musical instruments, the violins, the cellos, the basses, and they build piano boards out of them. And it's because they are a very special wood. And I showed and demonstrated how he took a hammer and showed how when you hit the tree, it produces a certain resonant tone and these particular logs in that forest are known as resonant wood and they actually sing and when they were talking about the tree singing I remembered King David writing those very words in the Psalms which were his songs for worshiping God so I believe that since King David was the musical instrument maker of Israel and the sweet singer of Israel, but he manufactured the harps and all of the musical instruments that were used for worshiping God by his instruction. And there's some profound details that God has just revealed that are just going to be a stunning, stunning blessing to Israel, I believe. And so I wanted to put this all together and remind you a little bit of the last videos that I did where I revealed this stunning information that the Lord just put on my heart and showed to me and revealed to me, and I'm really blown away. And I was able to piece this together because it was only pieced together by the Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And something unexpected came up along with this that I must mention, and it has to do with the fig tree. And you know that we are being told all the time about that we are the fig tree generation, and that was you know, the generation that sees Israel, you know, represented by the fig tree. Um, when they come back and be a nation, then all of these things will start being fulfilled with the return of the Messiah. So this is something new adding to the fig tree. And it's brand new. You've never heard it, and you've never heard what I'm going to say before. So. Brace yourself for this stunning revelation because this is just going to blow your mind. And um, let me just get started. I have a bunch of research I did and so I'm going to share that. Before I get started, I want to say that I just found out that the people that I said that I had been friends with until some circumstances happened, um, 
I just found out that the harp makers in Israel that had worked 40 years to build the harps for the third temple, their workshop just burned to the ground with all 40 years work of hand carved musical instruments in it, all burned to ash. This was what I was talking about before, that there were reasons why I, we disconnected from each other. I was trying to figure out where to begin with this, so I think I will go to starting with God telling Moses about the color for the tabernacle and the curtains and the priest garments and how he appointed the blue, purple, and scarlet colors. The scarlet color is the Shani. Strong's Concordance says that it is number 8144 Shani of uncertain derivation, crimson properly the insect or its color, also stuff dyed with it, crimson, scarlet, thread. I talked about how when King David prophesied on his harps, he prophesied the words, I am but a worm. This was in reference to the Messiah, and that word was Tola. And that is the Tola at Shani. Let me read a little bit of the facts about this from researchgate.net, where it says, the most ancient finding of this dye was in woven fibers found in a burial cave dating from the late Neolithic age in southern France where these cocoid scales grow on oak trees. The scarlet dye known as Shani in Hebrew was used in the Holy Land during the biblical period. This dye was widely used for religious rituals in the second temple until the temple's destruction in AD 70. According to a source from the same period, only the best Shani dye product should be used and it should come from the worm in the mountain area. Whereas for other Jewish rituals, it was explicitly written that goods such as sheep, corn, and oil were brought from Israel. It is not clear from which mountains the worm of the Shani was obtained. Was it brought from Israel or from abroad? According to the writings of Roman authors of the period, and later texts, there is no doubt that the scarlet dye was produced from a species of cocoid scale living on oaks. Until the present study, however, knowledge regarding the cocoid species used in the Holy Land in ancient times had been lost, and no scarlet dye producing cocoid scale from Israeli oak trees has been found. Therefore, it has been assumed that in ancient times the dye was produced from the Armenian red or from Kirkmosis vermilis. The famous historian Flavius Josephus noted that the Shani dye symbolized fire, one of the four basic elements of the world. One of the latest instances of the Second Temple period, when in the wake of the destruction of the Temple, the Jewish sages decreed customs of national mourning and forbade guests at marriage ceremonies from wearing crowns made of shani or gold threads, as had been popular until then. And then the article discusses how these insects were living on various types of oak trees. Now let me just tell you something really special from my own research that I remember while writing my book and that is that when they tested the shroud, the burial shroud of Jesus, the shroud of Turin, there was oak wood found on the shroud. Now if Yeshua said, I am but a worm. I mean, King David prophesied of his descendant, Jesus, and he said, I am but a worm. That was the Tola at Shani. And everything about that worm that 
is so remarkable that is a picture of what he accomplished um, on the cross and everything. What this would mean would be that if the cross was made of an oak tree and King David prophesied about his descendant, the Messiah, to be the worm, the Shani, then that means that Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, was the crimson worm attached to the oak tree. That should give you the chills. The first scientific research on cocoid scales in Israel was done by Bodenheimer, who described three Kermes species that grew on different species of oak. Balachowski illustrated those species and renamed them in his research on Kermes species of the Mediterranean. This created a great deal of confusion because these cocoids were illustrated in different ways and had two different names. So they were calling it the Kermes and then they were calling it the Shani or the Tola Shani. Now to kind of sum up this part of the story, let me read this from nedtafministries.weebly.com because it just has a little segment here I want to read about the Tola Shani Crimson Grub. The color red has been in use for a long time. When in Israel, you will see red everywhere, but at one time, this was not the case. It was only used by the wealthy priests or someone with power. When Moses set up the tabernacle according to God's direction, he was to use the color red as well as blue and purple and white linen. But where did the dye for these colors come from? Rabbis in Israel have been searching for the source of these dyes for some time now. And then I just showed you the woman who's now trying to produce the dye. And she's hoping that the production will increase for their use in their third temple. So the, the uh, blue dye called Tachelet is believed to have come from the murex snail found in the Mediterranean Sea. And it can turn a beautiful blue when exposed to sunlight. But where does the red come from? According to the Hebrew words for it, Tola Aishani is believed to come from what is known as the crimson grub or the crimson worm. Although it's not really a worm, but an insect at the larva stage. Interesting thing about this creature is the red color it gives. It attaches itself to the Kermes oak tree and to try and take it off would kill it and the eggs because it's attached so securely it knows when it attaches itself it will not come down alive. Jesus, they told him, the rabbis told him to come down. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross and save yourself. But he couldn't come down. He couldn't come down off the oak. Oh my word, do you realize what this means? Now part of this has already been told about the insect itself and its connection to the Messiah. But I'm connecting the oak part of this because that is a profound connection. Jesus would not come down from the cross, and he could have, but he came to bear the sins of his people and to save the world, to reverse the curse of death from Adam and Eve's sin. And as the second perfect Adam, God redeemed us back to himself. Now let's just cover a little bit more of that story. Because um, it knows when it attaches itself, it will not come down alive. It attaches to the tree to hatch its babies. As the eggs hatch in the protective shell of the mother, they literally consume her, then burst forth through her shell to escape. And that is when the fluid runs down and stains the wood and the babies permanently. For three days, this worm can be scraped from the tree and the gel can be used to make red or crimson or scarlet dye. 
The Arabic word is kermits, from where comes the word crimson, probably kermis, I would say. There's another term for this insect called cochineal. This cochineal insect has waxy plates on her body and after that third day they will begin to turn white and its scales will fall off the tree like snow. And what happened on the third day? On the Feast of First Fruits, after the Messiah became the Passover lamb, on Passover, and he was in the tomb during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, as the bread of the affliction, and he was risen on the third day, and he took our sins that were like crimson scarlet and turned them white as snow. I'm telling you one thing, nobody has connected the oak tree and that piece of oak that they found on the Shroud of Turin to this story. I am connecting it before you right now by the power of God. And really, I could weep over it because it's, it's just another piece of the revelation. But something's coming that you are not going to believe. Now let me read that part about him not coming down from the cross. And consider the fact that he's hanging on the oak tree. Okay? Just like the Tola at Shani clings to the oak and can't be removed because it'll be dead. <laughs> the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews, which I have in my book that whole thing about how when he was on the cross, it said, Yeshua Hanasri Vimelech HaYahudim, and when you take the first letter of each one of those words, it spells yod heh vav -He. That's straight out of my book that was published in 2015. Um, and it says, and they crucified two rebels with him, one on the right and one on the left side. Those passing by were hurling abuse at him, shaking their heads and saying, ha, ah, you who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him were also insulting him. Now, of course, when King David wrote Psalm 22, that's the fulfillment that I just read of this psalm when it says, and King David was prophesying this on his harp, but I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn, they shoot out the lip, they shake the head. Let him commit himself unto the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. That's exactly what happened when Jesus was clinging to what I believe was the oak tree as the Tola Akshani, the crimson worm, the scarlet grub, the cochineal. Now this is a very special color chosen by God from the very beginning. It has some deep meaning to God that maybe we don't fully know. But let's just look at some of the circumstances where God commanded that the color scarlet of the shani or the cochineal insect be used as the scarlet color for the tabernacle and the priest's garments. And of course, the first words in that psalm was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which is exactly the words that Jesus spoke on the cross. Eli, Eli, Eliyama Sabachthani. One of the first places we see the scarlet color is at the birth of Pharez and Zerah. 
and that's Genesis 38 verse 27 and it came to pass in the time of her travail that behold twins were in her womb and it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread that's the chenille color crimson saying this came out first and it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold his brother came out and she said how hast thou broken forth this breach be upon thee therefore his name was called Pharez. and afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand and his name was called zara now remember that not only was that scarlet thread used there, but we know that Rahab, she hung the scarlet thread in the window for the spies to see it when they came to spy out the land, the two spies that came. But let me go to, after Genesis, let's go to Exodus 26, where it talks about the ten curtains of the tabernacle. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen, and blue and purple and scarlet, that's the shiny, with cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another, and thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of one curtain from the selvage in the coupling, and likewise shalt thou make the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops shalt thou make the, in the one curtain, and fifty loops shalt thou make in the other. Now let's read about the veil for the ark, which is Exodus 26, a little further down, verse 31. And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet, that's the shiny, and fine twined linen of cunning work with cherubim shall it be made. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. So right there, I just want you to take a listen to the fact that God is instructing them to use the scarlet color shani, tola'at shani, from the crimson worm for the curtain or the veil for the ark. And they were hung on the shatim wood. And that's going to be significant later on. Now God says this, and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, and an ephod, and a robe, and a broidered coat, and a mitre, and a girdle. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And they shall take gold, blue, purple, and scarlet, and make these garments. So these are people that are filled with the Spirit of God that created these colors for Aaron to be consecrated to perform the service of God. And so this is a special dye, a special color that is extremely sacred and special to God. And I talked about Bezalel in my book, but let's look at him in Exodus 35 because there was something God appointed about him. And this is verse 30 of Exodus 35. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. So this was the artistic artisan 
um, tribe of God. And ironically, the tribe of the Messiah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Okay, so he's filled with God's Spirit, and God's Spirit tells him how to manufacture these things, and how to design them, and carve them, and how to do intricate filigreed work, which is very ornate and beautiful. And to devise curious works, to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in the cutting of stones to set them. Now listen. And in the carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. He was a wood carver. Okay? Was he possibly building any kind of musical instruments and carving them from wood, resonant wood, from a singing forest of trees? And King David followed this pattern? Then hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroider in blue and in purple and in scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver, even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. So he was the carver of wood and he was also making and dyeing garments or thread using the chenille, which is the word here for the scarlet color, and that's the crimson worm and the cochineal. And may I reiterate that he was filled with the Spirit of God when he created these works of art for the glory of God, for the worship of God, and to praise God. I should have probably read this one first in Exodus 35, but this was stated to be the materials for the tabernacle. In verse 4, when Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is willing of heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red. And that's the same word, shani, for the red color for the ram skins and badger skins and shatim wood there we have it again and then it goes on and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and that's what they did and God appointed people from the tribe of Judah and also from the tribe of Dan filled them with the Holy Spirit to be able to carve all of these things and to fashion anything according to the knowledge given to them by the Holy Spirit of God. And where it says scarlet there, if you look that up, it is Strong's 8144, Shani, and it says scarlet and then it says thread next to it. When they made the additional priestly garments, it said, And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined linen. So, these pomegranates had the color shani on them as well. And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe round about between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate round about the hem of the robe to minister in as the Lord commanded Moses. So this color was a command. Now let's skip over to Leviticus 14 where it talks about the law of cleansing the leper. Um, this is verse 2. 
This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. Now let's go to Numbers 4 where it talks about the table of showbread. And upon the table of showbread they shall spread a cloth of blue and put thereon the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers to cover withal and the continual bread shall be thereon and they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, shani, and cover the same with a covering of badger skins, and shall put in the staves thereof. And they shall take a cloth of blue, and cover the candlestick of the light, and his lamps, and his tongs, and his snuff dishes, and all the oil vessels thereof, wherewith they minister unto it. Now let's read the story of Rahab, the ancestor of Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and this is the JPS Tanakh 1917 version. Joshua 2, verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shatim the two spies secretly saying, Go view the land of Jericho. And they went and came into the house of a harlot, whose name was Rahab, and lay there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the land, and the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, that are entered into thy house, for they are come to search out all the land. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and she said, Yea, the men came unto me, but I knew not whence they were. And it came to pass, about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I know not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof, and hid them within the stalks of flax, which she had spread out on the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to the Jordan, unto the fords. And as soon as they that pursued after them were gone out, the gate was shut. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you, when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond the Jordan unto Sion into Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard it, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more spirit in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now therefore, I pray, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have dwelt kindly with you, that ye also will deal kindly with my father's house, and give me a true token, and save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. And the men said unto her, Our life is yours. If ye tell not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord giveth us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the side of the wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers light upon you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. And the men said to her, We will be guiltless of this thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window. That's the shani. 
and thou shalt gather unto thee into thy house thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household and it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street his blood shall be upon his head and we will be guiltless and whosoever shall be with thee in the house his blood shall be on our head and if any hand be upon him but if thou utter this our business then we will be guiltless of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear and she said according to your words so be it and she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window and they went and came into the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way but found them not then the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun, and they told him all that had befallen them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, and moreover all the inhabitants of the land do melt away before us. And of course, that scarlet thread, that scarlet line or rope, whatever was dyed with the shiny is representative of the Messiah of our salvation who saves us. Now I want to mention that they came from the way of Shittim and it means the meadow of the Acacias and appears in Numbers 3349 but the same Shittim is used to denote the same locality in Numbers 25.1, Joshua 2.1 Joshua 3 1 and Micah 6 5 so in Joel 3 18 there's a prophecy it will happen in that day that the mountains will drop down sweet wine then the hills will flow with milk and all the brooks of Judah will flow with waters and a fountain will come forth from the house of Yahweh and will water the valley of Shatim and of course the Ark of the Covenant was made from the acacia wood. Now listen to this. Many scholars consider the reference to the Valley of Shittim in Joel to be symbolic and not an actual geographical location. However it was because that's where Joshua sent the spies from. Joel was figuratively announcing that the water of life, the gospel of grace, would bring newness of life to a desolate and dying world in this messianic picture Christ Messiah himself is the fountain who shall come forth from the house of the Lord and water the valley of Shittim the flowing streams of living water will reach far and wide flowing to the Gentiles and to the most remote regions of the world God's grace is an overflowing fountain that will never run dry and remember when the leper was healed one of the birds dipped in blood of the other bird over running living water and it's all representative of the Messiah and Shatim is a transliteration of the Hebrew word for acacia trees the location was likely named for its great number of acacias and I talked all about the acacia in my book, as a matter of fact, which was really stunning. Um, an alternative name for this area is Abel Shatim, which means meadow or stream of the acacias. The shortened version is used more frequently in the Bible. The Valley of Shatim or Valley of Acacias mentioned in a prophetic vision in the book of Joel is a region that receives water from a spring in the temple and in that day the mountains shall drip sweet wine and that's the scripture that I just read to you so now I'm going to get back to talking about the forest of the musical trees the singing trees that's in northern Italy and how when King David prophesied he was speaking about the trees singing and clapping their hands and this is exactly what they say about this forest it has special resonant trees that they make musical instruments out of 
And I believe that King David, being the musical instrument maker for God's worship, knew that the trees sing and that he used resonant wood. And even though we don't have any real proof of what he was really using, although I wrote about King David's musical instruments in my book as well, and God showed me some interesting things about wood in there. Um, but let's just see what it says in the JPS Tanakh 1917 in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 6. Now listen carefully to this. And the priests stood according to their offices, the Levites also, with instruments of music of the Lord which David the king had made to give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endureth forever with the praises of David by their hand and the priests sounded trumpets over against them and all Israel stood. So right there it tells you that these instruments of music of the Lord are the ones that King David made to give thanks and praise to the Lord. So when you read about this, and I'm going to read Psalm 96, and it's actually verse 12, but this is the JPS, the Tanakh 1917 version. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, sing unto the Lord all the earth, sing unto the Lord, bless his name, proclaim his salvation, which is the word Yeshua. Proclaim his Yeshua from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are things of naught. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe unto the Lord, all ye kindreds of the peoples. Ascribe unto the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, The Lord reigneth. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad. And let the earth rejoice, let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the field exult, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood sing for joy before the Lord, for he is come, for he is come to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Then shall all the trees of the wood sing for joy. This is being revealed in the last days right before the Messiah arrives. The trees singing and that this was written by King David, the musical instrument maker. And I showed you all about that forest in northern Italy where they can point to one of the spruce trees and say this would make an excellent violin. The tone, the timbre, when they hit the tree with the hammer, it echoes up the entire, it sings out a note, a specific note. And they can tell that this would make a magnificent masterpiece of a cello, or a bass, or a piano, or a violin, or a viola. And just recently, the DW Drums went there and got wood from that forest for drums. And that's what I told that story of in my video. And of course I told the whole story of how Antonio Stradivari went to that forest in the north of Italy in the Alps and got special resonant wood to make the musical instruments. Now I believe since King David wrote about the trees singing, he knew, because that was a forest of singing trees, he knew about the wood that was resonant for the instruments of the temple. And this is going to be something that's going to be used in the future for the musical instruments to be a special wood of from these resonant trees, whether they're some in Shatim 
or whether he imported wood, like he did the cedars of Lebanon, which he floated down on the Mediterranean Sea to the port of Joppa. And they built Solomon's temple from those cedar logs. So they were importing wood. Now this is the singing forest, the musical forest of trees in northern Italy where they get this wood that Stradivari went and harvested for his famous violins and musical instruments. And I believe King David knew that secret of the singing trees because he wrote about it. Just like he wrote about the Messiah in his prophecies. Now why did I say that I believe this is going to be something extraordinary that's going to be revealed before your eyes in the last days right now? Because let me tell you something else about the cochineal which is the same as the Shani. And let me just tell you that number 7892 is Shira. Shira, a song, singing, musical, song, musicalik, singer of song. It just so happens that my neighbors that used to live across the street from me and my mother, their last name was Shira. And when a friend of mine sent me a songbook from Israel, it said Shira. So their name meant song in Hebrew. And I had no idea. But I went and told their son, and he was kind of shocked. And I think, what are the odds of that? <laughs> First Chronicles 15, 16 from the JPS Tanakh, 1917. And David spoke to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren, the singers, with instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals, sounding aloud and lifting up the voice with joy.